Hi, Bonnie. Hey, Ryan. How are you? Good. How are you? So good to see you. I know. Um, I just want to thank you for taking time to chat with me today. Oh, um, I know goodness. you're super busy. Yeah, and for busy. letting me share this with my creative friends and community. Um, yeah. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. I always love talking with you. Yeah, likewise. Um, so you are extremely well known in the creative community. But for those who might not know you, I find your story and journey to surface pattern design extremely relatable yeah. and inspiring. And I would love if you don't mind to just share a little bit about that along yeah. with maybe your why and the heart behind what you do and how it led, led you to immersion. Yeah, I would love to share about that. So I am a surface pattern designer, artist, illustrator, and educator. And I never set out to be an educator. So it's a fun story. Um, but my story really started back in 2009, 2010, when it dawned on me that surface pattern design was even a thing. I'll never forget the moment I realized it. And uh, specifically, I wanted to be a fabric designer. And I had already graduated college and I just didn't know how to do it, but it was very clear to me that it's what I wanted to do so very badly. Um, it's just that I didn't have anything at my fingertips. So I wasn't an artist. I didn't have a regular art practice. I didn't even know what I needed to know or learn. Um, I considered going back to school and I was literally filling out the application, which would have uprooted me and my new husband, like, um, newly wed husband that sounded like I have a, a different one now. <laughs> me and my husband had just gotten married and it would have you know uprooted us and taken us somewhere else and I remember just feeling this fire underneath me feeling like you know what just try it on your own yeah and so I said I'm gonna do it I'm gonna put my head down and try to learn on my own and it was hard. I mean, 2009, 2010, there was really no information at our fingertips. There were no online classes happening. Um, the industry felt really tightly closed. And so it took me about two years of piecemealing together bits and pieces of information from every corner of the internet, um, learning Adobe Illustrator on my own, all the things. And at the end of that time in 2012, I signed my first contract as a fabric designer. And I had just never had something so impossible be poss become possible in my life. And it made, I mean, it shifted me. It made me really truly believe in big goals and like big dreams. Like they can't be too big. Like I just believe in them. And then, of course, it has led me to seeing them come true for so many other people that it just makes me know that it's possible for other people, too. So, yeah, never set out to like my that was my big goal. And then in 2013, um, I had someone reach out to me with an opportunity to teach Illustrator. And, you know, I would have never thought to do that. And, but what it, it settled with me so well because I had this urgency to give back. Um, and I thought if I could make this path, this journey, all these steps streamlined and easier for someone else, like that's what I wanna do. I wanna share my secrets. I, sometimes I say I've built everything on just sharing <laughs> secrets, yeah. like not holding anything back. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I wasted a lot of time in the two years like figuring out what I needed to learn and learning stuff that I ended up not needing in the end. And I think that that's the real beauty of teaching this course, the immersion course, because I've refined it so much to everything someone needs, but also nothing they don't need. And yeah. so it just streamlines the progress um, and people come out of it with real clarity on what they need to do and what they want to do and how they want to go about doing it. So it's, you know, turned into um, something much bigger than me. And it is just a huge blessing and joy to be, I mean, it's such an honor to be on this side of it and be able to see students make progress and share their stories with me. And um, it's just, it's really fun. Yeah, I love that. I love your story. I think um, you can tell when somebody's heart is in what they do because you have such a natural way of teaching and leading 
and sharing so freely with people that you're really there to support somebody in becoming their best version of whatever they're working towards. Yeah. I'm intimately close to the person I was when I was. Yeah. And if I had just had someone like reach through the fog and grab my hand and be like, I'll show you the way it would have changed everything for me. And so I think that's really where my heart is, is just being able to, um, to guide people. Yeah. I love that. Um, I'm going to ask another question with along the teaching lines for people who are curious. Um, it's so different than it was when you were starting, we're starting because there is a little bit more access to education. So yes. with your Skillshare and with your courses on Skillshare and with even YouTube or other platforms, can you talk a little bit about what differentiates immersion? I mean, I have lots of thoughts on that, but I would love <laughs> to hear from you about why, um, why people come out of that with such more transformation than necessarily tuning into a Skillshare class and piecing things together. Well, I actually would love to hear your thoughts because I don't take all of those other things. And so I don't really know, but I do know what I hear from students the most. And there's a few things that I hear over and over and over again. And one of them is um, the flow. So I don't know what it is, but I think I have, no, I know that I have a special knack for breaking down really overwhelming things into like bite-sized achievable steps that build on each other. And so it kind of breaks down the whole process in a way that just feels very manageable. And I think that students really feel that and can um, put things, it makes it more applicable. Um, the other thing though, that I don't really talk about on the front end of this course, um, it's more like on the back end, like once you get in, yeah. We actually work on mindset a lot. We work on imposter syndrome and being confident and all the things that go into what it, like the ingredients that you need to be successful. Um, knowing how to walk through overwhelm and break things down. And so a lot of it is mindset and the mindset of someone who is determined to be successful. And so I think that that's different. And then I think the community is different. I think I really work very hard to set a precedence that we are community over competition, that it is never a competitive space, that we are only there to support and celebrate each other and to help each other. And so that just resonates with people. And then they freely share like resources and feedback and updates. And it brings people together on this common thread. And like I said, that's an example of something that's just turned into something bigger than I could have ever imagined because the family that gets created through the process is long lasting and really um, just so incredible to watch. But yeah, I would love to hear your answer to that. Yeah, well, I can, I'm gonna touch on the community because I can vouch for that. I took immersion in 2019 and some of my best, closest creative friends <clears throat> I have found through your community. So, mm -hmm. and they've made all the difference for me. Um, so yeah. I am such a big fan of community always and the idea of community over competition and having a safe space. A safe space allows you to grow and stretch yourself. Um, I would agree with what you were saying about immersion. I feel like it's the one place where you get start to finish through Illustrator. If you want to be, yeah. <clears throat> you want every single step, you have a very natural talent of breaking it down and simplifying it and not skipping over things. I think that the majority of the people that I talk to that have taken immersion and me included, you go back and revisit because yeah. you don't know what you're going to need until you're ready for it, but yeah. you've learned it. You know that, oh, I remember learning that. I'm going to go back and refresh on it. And yeah. I think it, um, we've talked about this before, but it is the foundation. Like it is investing in the foundation of your skill set. It's, um, if you were going to college, it's like the prereq, I would say. Like every, <laughs> every freshman should take this course because it's worth <laughs> every penny because you learn how to do it the right way. And you yeah. learn how to do, um, when you see artwork, you now know how it was created. You can break down the steps because you walked people through that step. And it's so much more like you were saying than just the technical side. 
I always think the secret to success is the mindset and the strategy, right? The doing yeah. and the believing, and you really do blend those really well in immersion. Yeah. You know, I think there's a big difference in learning Adobe Illustrator as this program that architects use and, you know, him like typography artists use, and you're learning it in the environment that it is for surface pattern design. And it just builds a workflow that is unique. And, you know, this year, so this is the fifth year of the immersion course and it's the third time that i've recorded the whole thing so i just finished re-recording well it's been like a five month process yeah. of re-recording the whole course and the process i wanted to give you a little behind the scenes because the process was that sarah who's our community manager is in charge of the support team so we have we bring a lot of people in to help support during the course and last year they created a document for me because I knew that I would be re-recording for every lesson, like all the common questions, um, things that they were having to help and answer and that, that kind of stuff. So I had that to reference this year. And so as I'm going through all the lessons, all the questions, uh, you know, I've touched on in yeah. the actual lesson and it's just, I'm so proud of it. Um, third time it's really refined and I'm really excited about it. Oh, that's incredible. I'm excited for it. I, I tune in all the, every year. I, there's always something to learn. And I think you say that in the very beginning, if I remember correctly, that even if you think, you know, it, you challenge to sit and watch it and see what else you will learn from the very beginnings. And I learn something every time. You know, I have uh, a couple of courses that I listen to every year that are outside of surface pattern design, but they, even if they're the same a year later, I'm not the same. Yes. And I just, things fall on me differently. Uh, you know, I have different takeaways every time. And so there's something really to be said for, yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, this is a two-part question. Who do you think immersion is right for? And maybe more importantly, who is it not for? love this question. So I think that something unique about the course is that a lot of people do a lot of different things with it. Mm -hmm. And so it, I have people who take it that are just curious creatives, like they want to have a new skill set. Um, I have, you know, grandmothers take it just so they can take their grandchildren's artwork and turn them into Christmas pajamas. Um, I've got people who take it to learn how to make like cut files for their cricket machine, like <clears throat> all different types of things. But my goal is to teach really from the highest umbrella, meaning if you take this course, you can create a career like you have mm -hmm. as a full, like a full time professional surface pattern designer, knowing that people will trickle down from there and take all these different kinds of avenues, um, so there has to be like a curiosity, a willingness to uh, learn. Um, technical bits are that we're Adobe Illustrator based. And so, you know, someone who doesn't want to use Illustrator is a good example of someone who might not enjoy the course so much yeah. because it's yeah. heavily, heavily based in Illustrator, at least the first three modules are. Um, and so who else is it not for? I mean, people with a bad attitude, people who don't like community. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a really special, I think probably the person it's for the most is, I think you'll probably agree with this. Like it's really um, hard to find people in our day-to-day -day lives that truly understand what we're doing um, yeah. and speak the language. Like there's a whole industry language we're talking about you know, the blob brush tool and Pantone colors and licensing. And like, that's just not language that you get to share with your friends at dinner typically. And so to be, to have that place where you just are understood and, and people know how to fully support you, um, I think is part of what brings us together so much. Yeah. I love that. Um, and I would agree. I would agree with all of that. I think I, a lot of times get asked, um, if I know a little bit about Illustrator, is it still right for me? And my typical response would be yes, because I think there is a lot of value in the confidence you build throughout the course about 
exactly what you were saying, speaking the language, being confident in the work that you're creating and feeling that you are ready to, if you want, license and send it to art directors without feeling insecure about what you're sending them. Yes. I mean, honestly, my, so, you know, it doesn't matter if you've never opened the program or if you've been working in it for a decade, we start by opening the program and I preempt, preempt, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word. Um, all of the people who have experience, I um, really request that they go through the lessons anyways. And I, those are my favorite stories. Like I've been working in Illustrator for 10 years and I came in thinking I knew everything and oh my goodness, the keyboard shortcuts and the workflow like has refined my process so significantly. And you're right. It's just a level of confidence. And truly though, you don't need any experience. If you have a little experience, um, you, you will, you know, you'll, you'll have a little bit more wind under your wings. Like you'll really be yeah. able to start to fly a little bit quicker. Um, cause it takes some, I mean, illustrator to me is almost like learning a different language. It takes a minute to wrap your mind around the program and learn all the things. 100%. I would, I, um, before I found you flailed around in illustrator and <laughs> it's hard if you don't know what you're doing, it's a long learning process yeah. to figure it out and to do it correctly and know all the things like expanding and when not to expand and all those little things that yeah. no one, no one's telling you. <laughs> and how good does it feel to know it like the back of your hand? Amazing. It, it, it gives you confidence to focus on the other things, to focus on the creative side and what you want to do rather than be being worried about the technical side of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you is once students, I know this, um, it's an investment for people to take immersion. So once you are inside immersion and you've enrolled, what do you say to students who are worried about, um, falling behind or maybe getting stuck or hung up? What does the support inside, um, the community look like? I know we've kind of talked about that a little bit, but so much support. Yeah, so it is an investment and I I also invest in my own education and I know what this feels like. I know to be like stretched in order for um, education and investment and over the years I have just done it over and over and over again and so has my subsequent like productivity and success and I think investing in yourself does so many things it it helps you take yourself seriously it helps you show up and do the work um I mean I yeah it it helps me like when I'm invested in something um I hold myself accountable to it to really do it yep. and um it's certainly um it's certainly why so many people find success. And so one, I know this wasn't really your question, but we are releasing a um, new page this year for, we call it the Celebrate page um, for stories of students. And I'm so excited because for the first time it's, it's um, searchable by attribute. So we have data on um, people's stories and, and like what industry they're in and what their income is looking like. And um, all these different things that, you know, are questions for people. So oh, that's incredible. I'll make sure you have the link. People will love to look at that. So, okay, support. <laughs> so uh, if you join the immersion course, you get lifetime access to your version of the course. So if you join in 2022, you'll have the 2022 course and what we call your library indefinitely. And um, so we have people work through it in the eight weeks and finish. We have people who work through it in like the six month range. We have people who take a year. We have people who um, will do it. And then the next year they'll come back and do it again. A lot of people just reference, you know, like they'll do it. And um, as they approach a time in their career where they're like, I need tips on my logo, they'll revisit the course. Yeah. Um, the alumni community is always open so people can um, pop in there and ask questions and things like that. Um, the support, like the, the, the official support um, this year, we have 26 people on our ah. support team. <laughs> And uh, so that is my um, guarantee, basically, that people will be touched. People will yeah. be 
helped, um, no question will go unanswered and uh, they will all just be loved on so, so much. And so our support lasts for 12 weeks. So the course is eight weeks. We do like proper support for 12 weeks. Um, nobody vanishes after that. Like we're all around and, um, you know, here for our students always, but proper support from the big support team is for 12 weeks. Perfect. And it, you've moved it off of Facebook. So if people have an aversion yes. to Facebook, it, they are safe. They will still have access to the community, right? We have a private hub. We call it the hub where it actually works very similar to a Facebook group. So you have a profile, you can make posts, you can include pictures, you can tag people, you can heart and like things. Um, you can use hashtags, but it's not on Facebook. It's right within the course. Um, so if you're in the course, you just hop over to the community back and forth. It's all under like one roof, which I love, like I love so much. Yeah. yeah. I love that too. Any community, I, I think there is a group of people who love the Facebook groups and there's a group of people that have a hard time in there getting um, lost maybe. You know what I think it did? Uh, last year was the first year that we moved off Facebook and did the, did the hub. And um, there's like a higher level of focus. And yeah. because when you come into the course, you're in the course mentality, like you're in the lessons. And if you're on Facebook, you know, you're scrolling and it's like, you know, your best friend is pregnant, you know, like someone else has, you know, is sharing something that's just like drama and then it's course update and it's just like, yeah. ah. <laughs> and so there's such a new level of focus. Like we're here because we're learning. This is our mindset. And um, it just brings a level of, of yeah, focus, I think, yeah. to it that we've never experienced before. And um, engagement, I was wondering if engagement would be lower. Um, and it wasn't. It was exactly the same, like super high engagement during the course in the community. And I, I love that. Oh, that's awesome. Um, okay. So if you, once, when you see students in the course, what are like two or three things that you see students doing that help them be successful? Like yeah. preparing as you're preparing, uh, you're going to do immersion. What, what would you tell somebody getting ready to go of, to set themselves up for success within the course? Yes. I talk about this philosophy of doing one thing a day um, all the time. And that's how I achieved my biggest goal was um, I didn't, I let overwhelm completely like stop me in my tracks and did nothing in order to become a fabric designer for like six months. And I woke up one day and I'm like, just, just start. It doesn't matter. Like it's overwhelming. Just start doing one thing. And so that it, the consistency is key. Um, so that's what I share with students. You don't have to come and do the whole module that day. You have to make a habit of consistently approaching the course. It doesn't matter what timeline you're on. So if you're yeah. moving slower than people, you arrive at, everyone is, is on their own timeline. And the vast majority of people all do have something that crunches on their time. You know, we have, um, moms with young children. We have single parents. We have people who are taking care of their aging parents. We have people with full-time jobs and two jobs. I mean, we just have everything. And so everyone has to arrive at being okay on their timeline. And I'm never worried as long as they are consistently approaching it every day. I mean, I'm talking 10 minutes. I'm not worried. I'm only worried when I see people fall off for two weeks. They don't remember their login. It feels like heavy to get in there and figure out where they were, you know, just yeah. make a decision to consistently approach it, make it a habit and you'll chip away at it. Yeah. I love that. Um, what is your hope when somebody, you kind of touched on this briefly in the beginning, but when you're done with immersion and you have worked your way through at your own pace and you've gotten to your end, what is your hope for your students that they come out of immersion with? My, I'm going to go big first. <laughs> My hope, honestly, is that everyone loves what they do for their, for a living. I think um, how how life-changing, like global changing would it be if we all loved what we did? And 
also, you know, something I talk about is creating the beauty that we want to see come alive in the world. So literally, like, what do you want to create? create that didn't exist before you created it. I think it's so cool that we're in the business of creating like beautiful things that literally did not exist until we did them. Um, And so I just, I get wrapped, carried away a bit thinking about how the world would be different if we were all focused on doing something that we loved because it, it leaks out of us. Um, Like when we're happy, then the people around us are happy and it's just this ripple effect. And um, we need more of that. And so I just truly hope that people leave um, with a skill set that they deeply love. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's safe to say that a majority of people do. Like everyone that I come in contact with, um, I think feel that way. I think feel leave feeling empowered too. Yes, and yes. I think that's a really important thing as, um, a creative and as just an individual feeling empowered that you can, you can make decisions based on the knowledge that you've obtained and move forward. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have not ever spoken to a student who learned like how to make illustrations and hated it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) There's something so fun about it. Like seeing, having a vision and then seeing it come to life is, um, it's really rewarding work to see something come to fruition. Oh, I still, still to this day, every new collection, every new artwork that I get a hold in my hand, there it's, it's, uh, makes you want to squeal. I don't know, jump up. I get so excited when it comes. <laughs> Me too. Oh, I love it. Um, okay. I'm, I know you've got to run. So this is my last question. I know you refilmed immersion 2022. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited for it, but what module or lesson are you most excited about this I, year? I, uh, I knew you were going to ask me this question. I'm actually going to look at them. Um, we have, we have quite, quite a few new lessons. Uh, we're going to do like a Mythbusters um, session that I'm super excited about. Um, we have some guests coming in to teach for the first time and they're not like bonus modules. They are, uh, actual guest experts that are coming to teach inside the course. I'm excited about that. Um, I'm expanding the collection, uh, segment a bit to really help people wrap their minds around creating collections and what goes into creating a good collection and, um, why, working in collections is so fulfilling. So I think I'm excited about that, but you know, I get, um, so the modules of the course are intro to illustrator, illustrator mastery, uh, uh, repeating patterns, pro collection, creation, licensing your work and creative entrepreneurship. And something about the end of the course, when we get to get a little nerdy. I just think it's so fun. Um, yeah. I love talking about the business side of being a creative. And um, so I probably pipe up for that, those last few modules so much, because I think that's the empowering part. You know, I um, will never forget. I, I went into a art gallery when I was um, trying to learn all of this. And at that point, I was still kind of lamenting that I hadn't gone to art school. I had gone to business school. And the owner of the gallery looked at me and he said, yeah, but you know what? You can be the best artist in the world, but if you don't know how to sell any artwork, you'll never be successful. And at that moment, I just embraced it. And I thought, you're right, because I think kind of the opposite is true. Like maybe you're not the best artist in the world, but if you know how to run a business, and market your work, um, then you can be really successful. So I think that that's really empowering. Oh, I love that. And I agree with that hundred percent. And I think you can see that too, when you look out in the world of art that is all over products and surface, you know, all surface pattern design, you can see arts of all different levels yeah. out there. And it really is a testament to what you just said, that you don't have to be the best artist. You need all the pieces yeah, to the puzzle. Well, thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm excited to be in immersion again, and I'm excited um, for my creative community and the people that join me. So we love you so much. Uh, Likewise. Thanks, Bonnie. Having me. Bye.